You know when your grandma has been making chicken for you for your entire life? Then when you get a girlfriend and she completely ruins it? Yeah, that's what WB and Joss Whedon did to the original cut of Justice League. They ruined the chicken. Alright, so there will be spoilers in this. If you have not seen the movie, please put this video in your watch later playlist. Watch the entire movie, all four hours, then come back and we can talk about it. Unless you don't care about spoilers, you are very much welcome to stay. Now, I'll be the first to say it. I wasn't the biggest fan of every DCEU film that was released. But after Batman v Superman, regardless of what my thoughts are on that film, I was excited to see what was coming next, especially with the Justice League movie that they were building up to. We all know the stories behind this movie, Zack Snyder had to leave the project to be with his family and to work on himself, but the studio had other plans for this movie. They brought in Joss Whedon to finish the job and you know the rest, it's basically set in stone. So with all that rambling, what did I think of Zack Snyder's Justice League? In case you couldn't tell by the title, it really exceeded my expectations. Excuse the language here, but this movie completely shits on the theatrical release of the movie, which I thought was just alright. I didn't love it, but I thought it was fine for what it was. But from the first five minutes into this movie alone, you can tell this is a completely different film. This isn't Whedon, this isn't WB, this is Snyder's full, uncut vision come to life. And I gotta say, this wouldn't have been possible without you guys. You guys pushed for this movie to come out since, well, since 2017? So, yeah, this wouldn't have been possible without you guys. Starting with the positives, I really enjoyed the film for using its 4 hour runtime to its advantage. The biggest complaint you will see about this movie is the runtime, but in this film's defense, I think it totally needed the 4 hours. Even if you wanted to cut this movie down to exactly 2 hours like the studio wanted before, you'd miss on some great character beats and story moments. The runtime does hurt it slightly, I believe it's in part 3 where it slows down a little, but it manages to save it for me. The best thing I could recommend that you do if you haven't seen the movie yet is just watch it in parts because it is in 6 parts including the epilogue. It'll be easier, just do it that way. Using the time to give Stefan Wolf, Cyborg, and other characters more development is all I wanted with the 2017 version. Another thing I loved was the performances from everyone, whether the role is big or small, everyone's great. Henry Cavill is Superman, great here as always, this is probably the best thing Snyder's done with him since Man of Steel in my opinion. Also WB, can you please keep him as Superman, K thanks. Ben Affleck is Batman, much, much better than what Whedon did with him. Seriously, he was just the butt of jokes in that movie. Oh uh, yeah, oh something is definitely bleeding. I'm not amused. Miguel Gadot is Wonder Woman, leagues better, no pun intended, leagues better than her counterpart in Wonder Woman 1984. Jason Momoa as Aquaman, gotta be honest with you, I'm gonna miss Aqua, bro. Damn. Right ain't over yet, <laughs> my man. Ezra Miller as The Flash, a lot better here, not just a bumbling clown, he's actually doing some cool stuff with his speed like reversing time instead of just pushing a pickup truck, and I saved the best for last, Ray Fisher as Cyborg, this is basically his movie once he comes on screen, hell, this is basically a Cyborg solo movie in itself, and you see why he's the heart of the team. We can put it back Vic, make you whole again, I'm not broken. Some more positives, the score, my god the score, again excuse the language here but it shits on the last movie's score and Danny Elfman did that one and nothing really stood out aside from the Batman theme. <laughs> Last 
couple of positives I'll go through before I go into negatives. I'm going to speed on through these. Dark side, even though he's barely in the movie and he barely does anything, I loved his inclusion and his only line of dialogue to the point where I was just like, yeah, man, I hope to see you in another movie because you are amazing. I have turned 100,000 worlds to dust looking for those who robbed me of my glory. I will stride across their bones and bask in the glow of anti-life, and all of existence shall be mine. Jared Leto's Joker. Again, he's a character that's not in this movie a whole lot until the epilogue, which I think is the last 15 minutes of the movie. He's much better than what the Suicide Squad movie did to him. I don't like to laugh that much, it doesn't really work for me, but I owe you an apology, man. He knows exactly what it's like to lose someone he loves, like an adopted son. Isn't that right? Batman. How many can die in your arms before you grow numb to death? As long as you have this card, the truce. Why you sent a boy wonder? To do a man's job. And the scene, well, scenes, where I completely lost it, Martian Manhunter. I mean, I saw the storyboards that was put up, I think, last year, but I thought, oh, it's fake. Somebody could easily draw that up and say Zack Snyder did. But no, it was real. He's in this movie. He would have been useful in the final battle, but you got Superman, so it doesn't matter. And I'm glad he's here. He looks great. I mean, that's as real as you're going to get with Martian Manhunter. As for negatives, honestly, I think it's really only one thing, and I think that's probably a nitpick. I feel like the whole nightmare section in the epilogue could have been cut. I mean, after the Superman ending, you could have went straight to Bruce waking up and seeing Martian Manhunter. But again, that's a nitpick. And it's kind of fun to see the nightmare timeline just to see, you know, what Snyder was going to do for Justice League 2. And I believe it's part 3, like I said earlier, where things start to slow down. But it builds up to something amazing and it builds up to the strong foundation that was in part 1, 2, and everything going forward. All in all, I really, really enjoyed Zack Snyder's Justice League, and I'm definitely going to watch it again. It is really, seriously, in my top three for favorite DC movies at this point. And it's hard to believe that the studio really did a hack job on this film, especially cutting out all of the cool stuff at the end of the movie. Like, seriously, why would you cut this out? In all honesty, I hope this makes WB say, okay, Zack, let's try and work something out. Okay, Ray, let's work something out, please. You really did good in this role we want you back it's a 50 50 chance that that'll work but we'll see so i'm gonna leave that there let me know what you thought down in the comments below about Zack snyder's justice league did you love it did you hate it i'd love to hear your thoughts so as always i appreciate you guys for watching this video if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more content like this in the future be sure to leave a like and subscribe join the family help the channel grow also hit the bell icon and set the notifications to all so you never miss a video love you guys stay safe continue to spread nothing but peace love and positivity and i will see you guys next time this has been the web warrior signing off